Hi everybody, Pastor Scott here with this week's V-Blog. I guess they call that a vlog. Well, everybody is hunkering down still and we are in a place where our trust, our confidence, and our peace is all the result of His Lordship over our lives. We are standing on the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and we will not be moved by what we see, hear, think, or feel. Today I want to speak to you from my book, 31 Days of Peace. And today's text comes from day one, peace that overcomes. In John 16, 33, Jesus says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. The disciples of Jesus find themselves on the brink of some pretty radical changes in their world. Their lives had already been turned upside down by the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. And now he absolutely catches them off guard with a conversation about his pending departure. They never expected that, and they never anticipated the level of responsibility that they would be carrying. In other words, they're going to be facing a lot of pressure in ways they were not ready for. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Peace does not come from having your world perfectly organized. It's the result of a deep abiding relationship with Christ. When you're grounded in life with Christ, the world around you doesn't have the ability to disturb what's going on inside of you. Jesus said, in me, you might have peace. I've often heard people say that Christ wants to be first in our life, but in actuality, he wants to be central in your life. Whenever he is simply first, then what we know is that the things that surround us in life are not the things that dictate and demand who we are. Everything is decidedly disconnected. If you make him central in your life, everything is connected to your life in Christ. And that's the source of your peace. And that's what it means to make Jesus the Lord of your life. We live in a fallen world, and right now you and I are forced to deal with the effects and the residue of that fall. Jesus actually told his disciples that they would face moments just like this, to be pressured, to experience pressure, sometimes oppression, affliction, distress. And so Jesus tells his disciples they're gonna face that and then all of a sudden he tells them, be of good courage. Seriously? Well, actually to be of good courage and to be of good cheer means to have confidence. How can Jesus make such a statement? Because the very next thing he says is this, I have overcome the world. All the power of the enemy has been defeated. Temptation no longer has control over you and even death is defeated on your behalf. You are victorious in life because Jesus was victorious. So today we love you, we surround you with our faith, our hope, our love, and we are with you contending for the eradication of this coronavirus. We declare a firewall around the Quad Cities, around your home, around who you are. We speak life and peace over you. We also speak health, healing, and wholeness because you are what God says you are, and you have what God says you have. So God bless you, and we'll see you very soon.